All right, how's it going? Today, I'm going to show you editor scripting tools. Uh, I've created a couple examples. Like, here's a tool to place objects. Snap to a specified snap distance. We could use the mesh tools here. Um, we can create our own gizmos. These scripting tools allow us to cr easily create new utilities for the editor that interact with the viewport in different ways. Rather than just being a button or a right-click menu on an asset, we can now easily, from blueprints, uh, create tools that create something on mouse click. The examples I've made for this uh, aren't the most complex, but it's just an easy setup so that you can get, a, get used to some of the things that this exposes, such as gizmos and the property sets that you can use on these tools. All right, let's get into it. If you're on 5.2, you're gonna open up your plugins. Okay, so once we open up our plugins, we're gonna just type script. These don't pop up. You're gonna to have to kind of manually look through them a little bit and look for scriptable tools editor mode and scriptable tools framework. And then we will, uh, we're gonna go down here to editor utilities and say editor utility blueprint, okay? From here, you just look up script. And then you're going to notice a couple different types of things. So what you're going to create is going to depend on the type of tool you want to make. All right, so what we're going to create today is going to be editor scriptable interactive tool. Okay, so this is where we're going to use this to have that gizmo open our tool, or our editor scriptable interactive tool. It's already here. Uh, it's already here, the tool. But what we're going to notice is so there are um, some default variables here called scriptable tool settings. So these are the important parts. So like this is the name of the tool. So this is going to be called snapping um, for us. We can put it in a category, but we can categorize this like this could be our snapping section. Okay, once we add a variable, we are going to say, okay, what kind of variable do we want this? And this is just an example, obviously. So you guys could do whatever. But we're going to do that. I'm going to set the default to 128. And I'm going to say instance editable. Okay. Now we have this variable saved. I'm going to save this as size. Okay, now that that's saved, go back to our snap tool. And what we're going to do, we're going to set some stuff up in advance, right? Which is, I want that snap size to save when we're done with the tool and restore itself. So because we have this value here, we can say restore property uh, set settings it just needs that property set and then it's going to need that key we're going to save this as just size okay now once we save that we're going to say get uh selected actors right so we want to get all of the selected actors um that are currently selected we're just going to i'm just going to get the first one and use that to get it transform so we're going to get location Right. And then we're going to create a gizmo. So that's where this tool can be really useful is we can create multiple gizmos in the world. So say we were using this to model a mesh, you know, do some modifiers like the lattice modifiers. Say we make that our own where we want to have it where between this gizmo and this gizmo, something is happening. All we have to do is create a gizmo. Um, so TRS. Gizmo. Um, and then we can name it. So this is just going to be our size gizmo. Right? In case we have some other ones. 
Uh, there are some other options you can create here, depending on what you want to do. So you can have a combined gizmo or translation only. We're just going to do translation only. We want it to go in every direction. That's fine. Um, if we don't want it negative scaling, etc., and we can change the coordinate system as well from local. Um, but that's all we need to do, right? So right now it's creating a gizmo. Okay, that is what it's doing, and it's saving that setting or restoring that setting, no matter what it's doing. I didn't have anything selected, so nothing got created. Now we had something. Here's this gizmo. Is it doing anything when I'm moving it? No. So that's our next step. So let's go back to tool snap. We're going to come here. We're going to override a function. This next one is on gizmo transform change, right? It's going to give us this gizmo identifier. So if we had more than one, we could use this to change what's going to change. Um, if that makes sense. Uh, but we're going to get editor property. We're going to get that property set. And then the property we want to get, I called size. Now, sorry, it's going to be confusing because this is called size. And then the property is also called size. I apologize for that. I should have named them something else. We probably should. So I'm going to get a vector snapped to grid node. We're going to use it here. So this is a wild card. It's just going to try to get this as whatever this is. But what we want is the transform here. Okay, so that's the transform of the gizmo. And then we're just going to set actor location, right? That's all we need, right? So it's now going to update, update on gizmo move. And that's what we're going to be doing. This is the map. So this is the startup. So this only happens when the script starts. So this is something we could fix. We could say on selecting something else, change what's selected, but we're just making a simple tool for now. So the next thing we want to do is I'm going to get on script shutdown, um, on script shutdown. So we can actually get a type of shutdown depending on how this shut down. So we'll do a switch on e tool shutdown type. We could then decide, okay, if I cancel this, let's put this in the original spot, right? Um, I'm going to skip by that just because this is a video. Um, okay, so we're going to save um, property set settings. So these are those settings we were restoring earlier that I kind of just skipped over. It's size. But we're going to do on complete or accept, depending on what how we finish this. So now, every time we start this tool, it's going to have the size of the last time we used it. It's gonna trans. It's gonna snap this. Select an object. Select the snapping, and ta-da! We're now working on our custom snap. So this might not be something you necessarily need because there's snapping built in the engine. But let's say we only want to go back between one or two snaps. We could have it where, depending on the snap, it's gonna spawn different things. But we can save this out. We can just change that. It's now close to 64. Let's say complete. Nice. We're done. Let's go back to it, and there you go. Our, it's still there. It saved it out for us. That's because of what we wrote in there. This has a tick that also can run, and it runs on editor tick. All right, so I'm going to do that same thing, except we're going to create a editor single-click tool. Editor utility blueprint, and then we're going to go scripting. Oops, script, not scripting. Single-click tool. Um, so we're going to rename this one to tool underscore uh, Spawn mesh. There we go. Uh, we have everything exposed, so we're going to name this right away. This is going to be called Spawn Mesh Tool. Okay. And from here, you can say, do we want the mouse hover? Yeah, sure. And we can also add tool tips to these to help other people working on the project. Uh, we can also change the type of uh, shutdown type to accept cancel if we want to uh, with these tools. I did not point that out earlier. You can also change whether or not it's visible in the editor or not. Okay, so same exact thing. This one, though, is going to be a little different. So we're going to first, you can see it has other options. So I'm going to create a script setup again. And this is going to look similar to what our last one did. So we got to create another class. Just going to copy this class. And then we're going to name it. We're going to name it spawn properties. 
Okay, and then we're just gonna go static, static, mesh, right? And there's gonna be a static mesh that we can set, right? I'm just gonna set a default to editor sphere that is not empty by default. Now we're gonna get that same thing. So spawn properties. We're gonna do the same thing and create that into a variable just like we did last time. Um, and we can create, so if this wasn't able to set itself, we could create an on-screen message, by the way, as well. Uh, we can create a message by saying display user help message or display user warning, right? So if that was empty and we didn't have the right script type or something, we could automatically do that. And that's what you should do just in case as a fallback because uh, you never know when something's going to break, right? Event on hit. We're going to break this. No, um, but we're going to use this, right? So we're going to just create a line trace by channel. And our start is going to be here. And then we're just going to add. And we're going to add the origin. And we're going to add direction. Multiply this by a distance. So we're going to change this to a float. Let's set this to like a crazy number so that we always hit something. So let's create a branch for this. So if we hit something, a display, play user warning message and this warning message is going to say nothing clicked all right so on fail we're going to do that and then here we're going to break out this hit result and we're going to spawn actor from class we're going to use the location there um, and we're just going to spawn a static mesh actor you could make this so that this is how you instance things kind of make your own placement tool make your own um like foliage tool where you're instancing everything you place down and you do some like do that sort of calculation in here but we're not going to do that for now and then we're just going to take this and we're going to say uh set static mesh and all we're going to do is we're going to get editor property like we did last time and the property is the mesh property name is going to be spawned mesh on mesh now those names match so it's going to get that correct property failed and we don't have a fail state here okay so tools spawn click somewhere it's going to spawn whatever we have assigned right on event hover begin and event on hover and we're going to do some stuff we're basically going to do the exact same thing. So I'm going to copy and paste this, right? Here, though, we're going to create a variable for this one. Uh, you know, temp mesh. And then I'm just going to take this mesh. Okay. And then say delete. Okay. There we go. Um, so it's the same exact stuff running. It's just going to create two different meshes, but it's going to hide that from us. Is we're going to go into our spawn mesh. We're going to go back to our functions. We're going to say on hover update. So this updates as it hovers. If this mesh is valid, let's just get a. Um, we're going to break this again. It's the same exact thing. So you could copy and paste here. Break ray. Um, effect. And there's probably better ways to do this. This was just my way that I set it up uh, really fast. Get this working to demonstrate to you guys how great this tool is. I mean, honestly, I'm, I'm excited because I know how, how much stuff people have done with the geometry tools and that type of stuff. It's going to be awesome to see what people use this for. But we're just going to take that temp mesh and we're just going to set the location, right? It's that simple. We're just going to set location. Um, okay, cool. So now let's hit spawn. And you notice it went to us. Whoa, what's happening? We're hitting the ball, right? I wanted to show that one. I made plenty of mistakes, though, but that one was on purpose. Um, actors to ignore. So it's hitting the actor that we're spawning in because it has collision. So we're going to make a ray and just put this mesh here. 
So we're going to ignore it from the trace. And here we go. It's going to snap to whatever we have. And if we don't have something, right, we get that message. Nothing clicked. Oh, and it doesn't go away because I didn't turn it off. So that's where you do got to, you have to remove that message if you put it on. Or else it will stay on there. Uh, but as you can see, we change the mesh. And it changes here. Uh, anyways, that's it. Um, I hope to see you guys creating some awesome tools with this. Uh, if you like this video, hit subscribe. Um, I'm going to be making some more stuff on the tools. Um, check this out. You guys will create some awesome stuff. Like, I can't wait to see it. Anyways, that's it for this video. Uh, I'm going to continue to make some samples for this. And thanks.